I ate a lot of meat. They showed us commercials. Steak. That's what a man eats. Selling that idea that real men eat meat. But you got to understand, that's marketing. When I made the switch to a plant-based diet, I qualified for my third Olympic team. I broke two American records. I was like, man, I should have done this a long while ago. When I went plant-based, I wasn't sure if I was going to survive. And I actually became like a machine. I think this is going to wake a lot of people up. Today's blood and yesterday's blood. Yeah. We all want to feel great, have more energy. Most guys my age can't keep up with the grandchildren. My grandchildren can't keep up with me. Someone asked me, how could you get as strong as an ox without eating any meat? And my answer was, have you ever seen an ox eating meat? Hey everybody, this is Klaus from Plant Based News. So we've got a very special um, interview today. We're in conversation with the producer of The Game Changers, uh, James Wilkes. Thank you very much um, for being here. First up, um, when did The Game Changers journey first start? When did we first start about um, making this documentary? Yeah, well, the, the, the film actually sort of tells the story of how I got into it. Essentially, I was uh, training for a fight um, and I got injured sparring with one of the future heavyweight champions tore ligaments in both of my knees. And I had, well, there's six months where I really can't even train. I can't do anything um, except for improve my body. So I thought, well, I should really look into nutrition and how that might help optimize and improve um, my recovery and my performance. And that's when I came across a study about the Roman gladiators. Um, and there was research showing that um, the only known burial site is in Ephesus, Turkey of the, of the gladiators. There was 68 full gladiator skeletons found they analyzed it in a strontium calcium analysis and also a radioisotope analysis. And they could tell they're eating almost exclusively, if not exclusively plants. And I thought, well, this can't be true. You've got to have, you know, meat and animal products for protein to build and maintain muscle. And um, sure enough, I started digging into the research. And as I was doing that, I thought, I feel like I've been lied to. You know, basically I used to, used to get my research from magazines, from websites, and I thought I knew quite a lot about nutrition. But once I started digging into the peer-reviewed research, uh, I realized, you know, I've been fed a lie, essentially, all this marketing that we believe in. And so I thought, you know, I've got to tell everyone about this. So um, I then partnered up with Joseph Pace, who was a script writer previously. And um, we basically started working on these ideas for the documentary and, and just wanted to get my story out to the world and, and dispel some myths and show some facts. And how did it just go from you and Joseph to this Hollywood a-list, lab-endorsed, sort of uh, mainstream production with huge amount of appeal. It was like around 2011, 2012, we really started getting working on it. And uh, in 2013, so it's been a long time. In 2013, we, uh, we basically did some preliminary filming, started raising some funds for it. And as we started digging into it, we realized there's some really powerful stories and um, some really key information that we need to get out. And also sort of the demographic that, you know, we think should see this film, we're sort of younger, more into sports. They're used to a high quality production. You know, they're used to watching the NFL or the UFC or ESPN. Um, and so we felt like we needed a really world-class team in order to put this film together. So in 2014, we put it on hold. Um, and that's when we met Luis de Hoyos, who's got the most award-winning documentary of all time. Um, his first documentary won... Uh, the Oscar, it won two of the major Sundance awards, it won about 70 other awards. And fortunately, we got to meet him. Uh, we were actually at a, a race with Leilani Munter, another plant-based athlete, and we, Louis happened to be there. And we told him about the film, and he said, yeah, I want to help you guys. And we thought, well, I don't know what that means. Um, so a couple of weeks later, we, we called him up and said, what do you mean by help us? He's like, no, I want to I direct it. And um, at the time, he had a lot of films being offered, but he thought this was you know, one of the most important films that he could make. So Louis came on board and we were also put in touch with James Cameron um, and working with his COO of the Cameron Company's Maria Wilhelm. Uh, basically that's when we started formulating the team in 2014 and it sort of really started again, you know, with a much uh, higher quality team. You know, basically you could argue it's the most uh, powerful documentary team ever assembled with, you know, Louis Hoyos as the director, um, James Cameron uh, as an executive producer. Our editor has uh, two Eddies, which is the best awards you can get for you know, an editor. 
we had the music supervisor from ESPN, we had the top uh, documentary writer in Hollywood. So I feel really fortunate to put this team together. So that was 2015 and you know, it takes a while to, to film and then to edit as well. So we're finally getting it out. I believe at the end of 2017 or sometime around then, Lewis Hamilton approached you guys or was receptive at least to being filmed and being in the documentary. Um, how was that? And uh, I think you redid it, didn't you, after that? And how has it, how's it been with the other executive producers? Are they in the documentary or are they just kind of endorsing it? So basically we were actually in Sundance of 2018. Um, we kind of rushed that. The film wasn't really ready, but we got invited and we thought, well, we better do it. So we actually rushed the third act. You know, films are typically built in three acts. Um, so basically the last third of the film, we sort of rushed in a couple of weeks and it really wasn't ready. So um, we put it in Sundance and it got you know, great reviews and it did really well uh, and all the screenings were, were sold out, but we really felt like we'd rushed that end. So we redid the ending, we improved the music, the pacing of the film um, improved. And then we got the opportunity, like you said, to, um, to interview Lewis Hamilton. And then also the story of the Tennessee Titans is also was added uh, you know, after that, which is a really powerful uh, storyline, I think. Um, and that's when, you know, that's when Lewis came on board as an executive producer. And then later, you know, obviously Arnold came on board and Jackie Chan, they start to see the quality of the film. And those people are there to help either make the film or uh, help get it made or help get it you know, promoted. And then, uh, you know, Lewis Hamilton and then also Novak Djokovic, who just won Wimbledon, obviously. And um, Chris Paul, who's a nine-time All-Star NBA player. And um, <clears throat> so Lewis is uh, interviewed in the film. Chris Paul and Novak um, are highlighted just as sort of, you know, some of these high-level plant-based athletes are existing. And um, there's a lot now, obviously. And then Arnold is also um, in the film as well. So Jackie Chan and uh, James Cameron are not in the film itself, but um, you know, they're on board as executive producers. As more and more people came forward, like for example, Novak Djokovic, who you just mentioned, was the temptation to redo the film again. And <laughs> if not, did it, was that when it begged the question, why don't we do perhaps Game Changers 2 in a few years? Um, and where, what's the situation with that, with having these huge names come forward? And making that decision if they want to be involved do we do it again which is going to be a nightmare from an editing point of view you know you obviously started in 2013 what was sort of like the thought process and and how is it what's the trajectory going to look like in terms of involving those people yeah it's really difficult right because you know elite athletes are just really starting to switch over to a plant-based diet and as they start switching over um you know so it's sort of tempting to uh, include them in the film um but at some point, you've just got to have a cut off and say, you know, that's it. And so I don't think there's going to be a Game Changers 2, but there's certainly we could do other media, you know, like maybe a series or something like that, or even just, you know, uh, stuff on the web. And, it, and also we have 600 hours of footage that we recorded, you know, which we worked down into a, an 86-minute film. So we've got a lot of footage. We actually built out um, a 22-minute um, bonus content piece, which is on September 16th when we have the global theatrical release around the world in about 2000 theaters. There's also an exclusive after show with this 22 minute bonus content. And that's actually got, um, you know, uh, deleted scenes and um, extended footage and surprise appearances as well. So we got to put some athletes that didn't make the film. Uh, and then we got to show some great stories like uh, the, you know, the forest green rovers or, you know, the plant-based uh, night that they had at the Pittsburgh pirates, the PNC park. So we got to put some other great stories in there. So we'll continue to do media, but I don't think we do have another full length, um, you know, it wouldn't be a Game Changers 2 as in a full length documentary feature. That makes sense, yeah. And I'll link that um, September worldwide premiere down below for anybody interested in uh, checking out. I know there'll look, be a lot of people interested. So I, I think it's fair to say that um, people already having seen the trailer think that this is gonna be a bigger hit than say What The Health, which I, I know we can both say is a great production. Um, there's not really much controversy there that I think you guys take it to the next level. Uh, the question is, do you think that's due to like the, the editing and the camera work or more the people you've got involved? Like what kind of, what is it about this film that takes it a level up, do you think? Or is it a combination of things perhaps? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just that every, <clears throat> at every step of the way, we try to do everything at the highest uh, possible quality. So that was from, you know, deciding what was going to go into the film, the, uh, the footage that we shot with the cameras that we used, with the editors that we used, with the graphics people that we used, 
to the uh, the sound design, uh, the sound mixing that we did at Skywalker Ranch, you know, one of the top places in the world, to the color correction. Everything was just done at the highest level. And especially, I think, was important is the research. So we spent a lot of time on the scientific research with our chief science advisor, David Goldman. And because of that science, the film has been accredited not only by the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, which means that every doctor and nurse and dietitian in the United States can get uh, required ongoing medical education credits by watching the film and taking a quiz that we developed. They're also working with their 16 partner international uh, organizations. But on top of that, the Defense Health Agency for the United States, uh, which is the Department of Defense that oversees their nutrition, um, they've also accredited the film, which is the first time ever a film has been accredited. So I think that people, the scientists and these uh, scientific bodies are recognizing the authenticity and the credibility of the science in the film. I think that has really, um, you know, really added value to the film and then also the production quality as well. So you're saying the research that you did before and at the beginning of the journey of the Game Changes journey was research into, into what the physiological effects of meat and, and things like that, or what, what kind of research was it? The film heavily looks at performance and recovery, but it also looks at health. Um, so I think in terms of the performance aspect, uh, that hasn't really been covered well before. Um, so we really dug into that research, and that, that lies primarily around uh, inflammation and blood flow. So, you know, there's this myth that you can't get enough protein. Of course, all protein originates in plants. Animals are just the middlemen, right? And the, those animals are doing you a disservice if you're eating them. Right? So they're eating the plant-based food, they're robbing it of the fiber and the phytonutrients, they're concentrating the um, pesticides and the, the, the heavy metals, and they're also adding in inflammatory components. Uh, and so that really can affect your athletic performance. And then in the longer term, those same mechanisms that affect your performance are also going to affect your health. So we really dug into that, the science. And we also made sure that we were only mentioning studies that were reflective of the preponderance of evidence. So we're either using meta-analyses, um, and we made sure, you know, anyone can cherry pick data here and there. So we were very um, uh, insistent that we were reflecting the science, and that's why the film has been accredited by these scientific bodies. So I think that was um, really important. Do you expect to face criticism? I mean, people that are typically like anti uh, plant-based, anti-vegan, like Joe Rogan, for example, said James Cameron, who's the executive producer from some weird vegan kit. Um, it's just kind of interesting, isn't it? Do you, do you expect to face a lot of criticism when the film comes out? Yeah, it's interesting how emotional people get about the, the food that they eat, right? And so I think we're bound to anything, any position that you take, uh, you're bound to get some feedback and some pushback. And I think, um, you know, from the carnivore folks, where they're eating only meat, which seems absolutely ludicrous to me. And then also, um, you know, the paleo folks, um, te they tend to push back a bit as well. But the, the interesting thing is that the longest research ever done on a paleo diet, um, where there was a two year follow up, showed that they certainly did get improved um, weight loss in, the, in the, the short term. They also got um, improved blood markers. But the interesting thing was they cut out dairy, they increased their fruits and vegetables. And the one thing that they did not follow the advice of was the protein recommendations. So they didn't actually increase their meat consumption in the long run. In the short run they did, but they didn't stick to it. So the funny thing is about people that actually think they're on a paleo diet, um, they're increasing their fruits and vegetables, which is plants. They're reducing um, their uh, dairy intake or eliminating it, which is, we would agree with as well. And then they're not increasing their meat intake. So. They're basically going, for, and they're also reducing or eliminating, um, you know, heavily refined foods like white sugar and white, you know, flour and that sort of thing. So what they're effectively doing is going from like a standard Western diet and reducing refined intake, keeping meat the same and increasing, dropping dairy down and increasing their plant intake. So actually people that think they're going on a paleo diet, they're actually shifting more in a plant-based direction. Look, we're not trying to say, go vegan or go vegetarian. If people want to do that, great. We're just going to just dispel some myths and prove some facts. And hopefully that causes a shift towards more plant-based eating and preferably more whole plants because that's going you know, to be better for your health and better for your performance. But certainly people that are going on a paleo diet are actually doing that anyway. They're shifting more towards plant-based eating. Um, it would be great if they would shift even more. Um, 
but it's funny for anyone for the paleo movement to sort of try and say, well, all this plant-based, well, that's what you're doing when you switch from a standard Western diet, which I think most people would agree is not healthy and not great for performance. Um, that's what they're doing anyway. Did he sort of touch on that in the documentary? Obviously, the paleo keto things have always been popular in the sort of uh, the lifestyle health space. Did he talk about the carnivore diet, which is uh, which is a, a new kind of form of the ketogenic diet, I guess, which is trending at the moment? We we interview some of the world's leading paleo anthropologists, including the uh, head of uh, anthropology at Harvard, Richard Wrangham, and and we really address this sort of myth that um, our ancestors were eating you know, mostly animal foods, which they weren't. And so that's addressed from many perspectives based on um, something called differential preservation, where we used to, you know, plants basically biodegrade and animal bones and the tools to, to um, uh, chop up those animals, uh, they don't biodegrade. So this differential preservation, which basically means that those things still exist in the archaeological record and the plants are biodegraded, that shifts people's views to think, well, we were obviously eating mostly animals, right? But in the last 10 years, they're using new methods to look at like microscopic uh, plants and they're finding that we were eating a lot more plants than they once thought. And then, we, you know, the, the scientists talk about the teeth um, and, uh, you know, many other things in the, in the film as well, the length of the digestive tract and these things that you've probably heard of. Um, so we address that. We don't really look, we don't look at the carnivore diet um, because I was obviously after we were filming it, it wasn't that prevalent um, until, you know, more recently. Um, and then we don't, you know, we're not going after paleo diet or keto diet per se, but for example, we do highlight one study in the film. There was an eight week randomized controlled trial where there was people eating a normal amount of carbohydrates, which is obviously coming from plants versus, um, a ketogenic, uh, low carbohydrate diet. And the people in the, um, the normal carb diet actually gained 2.6 pounds of muscle over eight weeks. And the, doing the same, it was isocaloric, which means they're eating the same amount of calories. They were both getting the same amount of protein. And uh, the, the folks in the, uh, in the keto diet actually lost 0.2 pounds of muscle in that period, given the same amount of calories and same protein. So we do, we show that briefly, um, but we don't really address the keto diet per se. I've asked you what you think the main criticisms will be when the film comes out. Have you had any criticism so far? And what's it been around? What's it, what's it been about? Overall, we've been surprised that like even the demographic that we thought would be very resistant, sort of, you know, gym rats and, and those types, you know, young guys in their 20s that are hitting the gym, that are all about, you know, go, get my protein, get my meat. They've been actually, we thought that they'd be pushing back and they've actually been the most responsive. So it's incredible at these, you know, pre-screenings that we've been doing, like some of the festivals and then we've done some other um, screenings as well. It's amazing how... Uh, from just a single film, the shift that people are making. Um, I mean, it's a high percentage of people that have watched the film that have told us, look, I've gone all the way, I'm all in, I'm, I'm uh, recovering better, I'm feeling good, and they're sticking with it. So it's, it's pretty amazing, and I'm surprised there hasn't been much, much, uh, as much pushback. And what's the distribution plan after the, the worldwide uh, premiere um, in September, which again, will link uh, down below? Yeah, so September 16th is a, is a one-night-only event, um, and that's for just to take it out to the world. And again, that includes the 22-minute uh, after-show bonus content that's never uh, obviously been seen before. Um, and unfortunately, uh, contractually, I'm not able to uh, say where it's going next. So um, I definitely encourage people to go and watch the, uh, uh, the theatrical if they're able to but they should also rest assured that it will be available um, in lots of other ways um, after that. I get that, nice, it's no worries. Um, obviously, coming to the end now, really, really appreciate your time. Uh, obviously, you've met some amazing sports stars over the last couple of years, two, three, four, or five years, actually. Um, have you got any insight to speak about any of those experiences, what it was like filming with them, um, who you connected with, who really inspired you? People that have inspired me the most aren't necessarily all the ones with the biggest names, you know, like Patrick Baboumian, has an incredible story, becoming one of the strongest men in the world. We, you know, we did a, he does a Guinness World Record in the film for the heaviest weight ever carried by a human being, which is just incredible. And Arnold Schwarzenegger, what was it like securing that kind of interview? And did the executive producer James Cameron, who's close with Arnold Schwarzenegger, did he help get that interview? Yeah, I mean, it was really incredible. Um, you know, from the very first moment we, uh, we met, met him at his house, I uh, flew out with uh, Joseph Pace, the other writer, and also Rip Esselstyn, one of the other executive producers from Engine 2. And uh, James Cameron could just not have been 
more supportive and helpful the whole journey. So, I mean, from like the storyline, the, the favorite um, scene in the film is regarding erectile function. It seems like the most favorite <laughs> of every, all the screens that we've done. And uh, that was really, you know, we, we, would, we mentioned it to, to James Cameron and he said, uh, and we thought, mm, I don't know if we should really do this because it's like it's a little bit over the top and a bit controversial. And he said, no, I actually think if you're going off this real many eat myth, you know, I really think you should put it in. And so we've had a number of, you know, one, two hour calls at a time with him helping with storyline. And uh, yeah, and in terms of connecting us, um, for example, to, to Arnold, I mean, Arnold's really passionate about it, uh, you know, especially in terms of environmental footprint, um, having, you know, dispelling this myth, showing people that it's all about marketing and it's not based in reality. So Arnold is very passionate about it anyway, but certainly having James Cameron um, make those connections, obviously, is just invaluable. Last question. Uh, people have been waiting a long time for the game changes. Wouldn't it be worth the wait for them? Have you got any other closing remarks? Uh, anything you haven't mentioned seems to be that's worth highlighting. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, I'm really proud of it. It's taken a lot longer than I thought. If you'd have told me at the beginning how long it would have taken, I wouldn't have done it. Because uh, it's just been an incredible amount of work and stress for, the, for the, myself and the whole team, including Joseph Pace, the, the other producer and uh, co-writer. So it's been a lot of work, but we're really proud of, of where it is now. Um, and we really think people are going to, I mean, for the screenings that we've done so far, these pre-screenings before the global theatrical premiere, um, the shift that it's making in people's um, lives, I think, is just really inspiring. You know, and so whether people's motivation uh, is the environment or whether it's animals or whether it's their health or their performance, um, we really think everyone's going to get something from it. And it's surprising the demographics which have been interested. You know, we thought it would be younger, mostly male, but it's been male, female, young, old, um, just people coming up to me afterwards, you know, maybe a couple of months after they saw it when it was pre-screening and said, look, I've switched, I'm feeling better. From like the 18 year old um, at the gym to like the 80 year old that's um, had, you know, relatives that have died of heart disease come up to me and say, look, I'm just feeling, feeling better. So I really think people are gonna um, enjoy it. Um, in terms of getting tickets, it's easiest just to go through our website, which is gamechangersmovie.com. Uh, and obviously, if you want to follow us uh, on Instagram, uh, we're at uh, Game Changers Movie and uh, GC Movie on Twitter and Game Changers Movie uh, on Facebook. So, um, again, it's one night only, so people should definitely get their tickets because they are selling pretty fast. Thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget, everybody, uh, link will be down below for this theatrical release um thank you james and yeah please subscribe for more plappy seats thank you everybody for watching i'll see you guys very very soon